Howdy y'all, I'm all over the shoe man and today we're gonna be working on a pair of pretty cool snakeskin boots. These are vintage Nakona boots. Um, yeah, we're basically we're doing just new leather soles, rubber heels, and a general conditioning. They don't really need too much of a cleaning. Um, but something cool about these boots, so the customer that dropped these off, he bought them let me back up a little bit more. So the shop that I bought, me and my wife took over, back in like 1994, they used to sell these style boots, Nakona's, Lucchese's. Um, and he actually bought this pair from the previous owner's dad back in 94. So it was pretty cool that it came back into the same shop's hand, I guess. Um, but yeah, these are pretty cool boots. So we're going to be doing new leather soles and rubber heels and general clean and shine. Also got these pair, same customer, same thing. Bought them back in 94 from, I guess you would consider this business or this shop. Um, but a long time has passed since we've sold boots and stuff like this. Um, I don't think I was even alive at that point. 94 and I was born in 02, so um, it's pretty cool. Let's get started. All right, let's get, okay, this is funny. I need my red pliers to pull this off, but the red pliers is what's help holding up my phone to record, so let me get this rearranged around. All right, I got my red pliers now. So let's we'll start off with the top left. Um, these are made just like the newer ones are made today by Vibram. They got washers that are built in to the rubber itself. So when the nails go in, it catches that washer and holds that rubber top lift to the heel base. You see those? You see those things? This looks like it's no, that's a piece of rubber, but yeah, that, that that thing is embedded into the rubber itself. And so when the nail goes in, it grabs that washer and pushes it down. We don't need those anymore because I've got these Vibram cowboy heels, which are the same thing. They've got those washers embedded in here, and so when I put this on drive the nail in it'll hold it a lot of times companies will use or won't even glue and sometimes collars too won't glue those down because the nails hold and the nails are countersunk so i guess it's not going to wear down it's not a bad thing but i personally just like to glue them for that added protection so and then I'll take the heel block off. I like to run my heel prior all the way around just to break that seal. And then go in and just from around and pry it up. And there you go. And now you see the layers are separating so i'll end up taking this all the way apart layer by layer and re-gluing it back together that way it's nice and tight these nails are threaded nails that hold the heel block on from the inside of the shoe so because they go in from the inside of the shoe i gotta take them out from the inside of the shoe but for now i am just going to cut them so i can take the sole off and I'll take them out after I take the sole off. So I've got the threads that were holding the sole on. I sanded it to break them. I'm gonna take the same thing, heel prior, to get in between the leather sole and the leather welt. Just enough to pry it up and be able to pull it off. Then when I get back to here, I use my pliers to 
pull it up. And there you go. Now I'm gonna save this because I'm gonna reuse this back portion and I'll show you here why in a second. Now here in this four, this, this, the part of the shoe in the very front, there's a cavity with some cork and that cork over time has broken down and it just crumbles. So I'm gonna scrape that out. And then you see all those threads those are what held the sole to the shoe and then this welt right here gets stitched to the shoe so it's all stitched and held together fairly well but all of those threads have to come out because they're not holding on to anything anymore let's talk about this black piece right here this is called the heel brand and since you have the welt right here the heel ran is to make it look like that welt goes all the way around or to give it that same uh, look I guess and right here in the middle it's supposed to be thinned out and so it has a narrow waist it's just how they're all built um, this is a plastic piece and when I go to put my new leather sole on top there is a way I could use or, or the way, there is a way to glue it to it properly but it's just a really big pain in the butt so I like to replace it with leather and makes it a whole lot easier for me too. So I'm just going to mark where this meets in the shoe so that when I put the new one on it, it's the same shape. Um, I'm just going to take this off. Now, remember the old sole? What do you see on that back? has kind of that shape to it that goes up. That is the same shape as this. So I'm gonna take these nails out, cut along that line. I'm gonna thin out this back piece because this back piece was underneath the heel. It's unworn, it's unused. I could use it as a leather heel rand, heel seats. Um, I've also heard it called spur ledges, but these were so close to that the back of it is not really meant for holding the spurs um, but before we do that let's take care of those nails the threaded nails I've heard some people call them ring shank nails they're nails with threads on them so that they go in and they don't come out so easily and so what I'm going to do is take my hammer and if I were just to bang on this, it would hit that metal last underneath and just bend it. So I got to bring the head of that nail on the inside to the edge. So instead of hitting the last, it goes down and I'm able to pull it out from the bottom. Now this, learning this was a pain in the butt. I don't know why, it was just really hard for me. But I have to practice to get used to it now I was able to get now I'm able to get them out some of them there you go like to be stubborn like that one and so now it's hard to tell with the light you see them they that's what I got to grab out and same thing with pulling the threads out they're not holding on to anything you're gonna pull those nails out because they're not holding on to anything you're gonna put more nails into it and you don't want a footbed full of nails it just becomes uncomfortable and it also weakens the footbed so I'm just going in grabbing the head and yanking it out this also took some getting used to finding the nail and sometimes they don't want to come out like that. But I'm stubborn and I'll get them out. All right, 
There you go. There's the last one. And now, you see, there's no more nails. And we're ready for the new nails. Let me show you something cool with these old boots that you don't see nowadays, except for really in custom and handmade boots. So usually with mass-produced shoes, this is a footbed. This is what you step on, and this is what the rest of the shoe is built around. That's in pretty rough shape, this one. This one didn't come out of the boot. Um, this was from a different shoe. But you see those, that white canvas? That is called a gemming. And that has that raised portion right there so that the welt can get stitched to that. And then in between the welt and this is the leather uppers. Um, so it all gets folded down, the welt comes all along, and they stitch all the way around it. This doesn't have that. This has a leather footbed, and it has a channel that they carve into the bottom, similar to this. So they cut at an angle with their, a knife or something that they use, and then they fold that leather up. And then after that, it comes out the side like that. And then you do the same thing, you pull it out and you move on. And that way, over time of wearing it, you see how that's coming unloose? If that comes unloose enough, it'll start to move out like that. And then you lose shape of the shoe and then it's just a whole big problem to try to go and replace that. This, you have no issue of that. Very many, along, lots of years of wear with no problem whatsoever. As you can see, um, these are older than me. So that is pretty cool. That is called a hold fast. This is called a, a gemming welt, a gemming footbed. I don't know. Footbed with a gemming, hold fast, much better um, quality. Nowadays to get this, you have to get a custom pair of boots made and that's going to cost you a lot of money. That is why it is important and a very good idea to bring back these old pairs of boots versus buying new. Okay, so y'all remember the cork that we took out of this cavity? Well, we got to replace it. And this is how I get my cork. There's a couple of different ways you can get it. It's either comes in a a full sheet like a big four by six, I don't know, some sort of sheet that's really big and you have to cut it down. Um, it comes in these little pre-cut thin pieces or you have something called hot glue, hot glue, hot cork, which is basically has a consistency of peanut butter and you like lob it on and you have like a hot wand that you iron it and it fills in all the voids and you gotta let it sit and dry and this is the easiest for me okay we are ready to put the cork in now this cork has gotten significantly more expensive over the last years just as just like everything else honestly um, so I'm going to actually, usually I'll just pound this in, sand off the rest, and throw the little scrap away. But now, trying to be a little bit more cost effective, cost efficient, I don't know what you want to call it. Cut this piece off. Cut this excess piece off. Save that for a later project, and then we can hammer the rest of this in. Sometimes these cork sheets don't always always come back, or always come all the way back. So we take pieces like this and fit them right there. Or if it's not wide enough, I'll go on the edge like that. But start saving those pieces, save money, and just be more earth friendly too i don't know but this is our new leather welt that i cut from the back of the old sole 
So yeah, we're reusing that piece too. And I am lining up the edge of that heel rand to the line that I made. That way, it'll have the same back of the shape, same distance, same everything. It is time to put soles on the boots. We got the cork, sand, flush, everything pretty much in place, all glued back. We got our we got our soles ready, nice and flimsy. It helps um, the shoes not to be so stiff as you're walking in them. And we line up the toe. Just make sure we've got everything covered. And then take this, I believe is called a French hammer. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that, but we're going to put the sole on. Right in here, in between where the welt ends and where the rand begins, you can see there's a gap there. And so I need to push this down. But because it's got that curve in there, I don't want, it's really hard to hammer that area without leaving marks on it, like hammer marks, like that. So I take this, so it's a strap with a piece of leather on it. Put it around that area. Step on the bottom and it pushes it down. Now that is the leather that gets marked and the soles are pressed nicely down and nice and smooth. Here we have a trimmer blade. It is similar to this it's got like 16 different blades on there and it spins that way really fast and it just, it cuts the edges. And so I'm going to use that to trim the edges like that. And then we'll be ready to stitch the soles on. That noise coming up. Before I go ahead and stitch my soles on, I like to cut a groove around um, and that allows the stitching to be countersunk into the leather and that also allows you to walk on the leather sole without walking on the stitching, which breaks the stitching and then if the glue's no good, then it comes undone. So this is a groover. It looks something like that. So you got that blade similar to the the um, cutting, the trimming blades, just a lot thinner, and it spins and cuts a groove into the sole. Uh, noise coming up. After we made the groove, I did just a little bit of a bottom stain there, just for looks. Um, we are going to go ahead and stitch this on a Landis L outsole stitcher. moment of truth and it looks like we hit them all of them right here came out a little wide but you won't be able to tell once you put conditioners and stuff on there and there we are all right so for the back portion the part that goes underneath the heel block we gotta nail that with um some clinching nails and unlike the threaded nails where we don't want it to hit the metal last these we want to hit the metal last because you see how it's super thin that's eventually going to go in hit that metal last and turn like that crimp into like almost like a j and that'll keep this leather sole from getting pulled up
and there we are. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nails in the back, holding it secure. And next, I'm going to take these brass clinching nails. And I'm going to nail um, basically where that black portion is, the, the waist or the, the shank of the shoe, whatever you want to say it. And it's the same thing. It's going in and crimping like a J, keeping this from getting pulled up. And there we are two rows brass nails on either side make sure that that part is sucked up close and there's no chance of it coming undone now we're just gonna add some glue to the back before we glue the heel base to the shoe but before we put the heel base on I like to attach the top lift to the heel base that way I am able to sand this portion of the shoe which is which is that portion right there which is hard to sand to there is a sander that can I can use but it's a very rough grit so I like to put them together sand that nice and smooth dye it make it all shiny that way when you put it on i don't have to touch that and it looks good um yeah that's just a small detail that you don't really notice but i like to do it we are nearing the end of this journey i should call it a journey you see how it's all nice and smooth and finished looks good I'm just gonna line everything up. Alrighty, we are ready. Alrighty, and now we are going to put some nails into the heel where those holes are. Remember, those have the washers in there, which these are the nails you're going to use. They go in, similar to a threaded nail, but it's got like almost an, a tapered head instead of a flat head. And it's a little bit thicker as well. Then we take a punch and countersink them. Now we'll put it in the press and let it sit for a little bit. So one of the last steps is adding back in those nails that we took out from here, the threaded nails. So here we have our threaded nails. This is called a heel wheel. And you see those lines or the dots? This goes in the dots. 
And then when you spin this wheel, I can show you. Hold on. No, I'm not going to show you. Um, basically, there's um, there's tubes that are inside there that when this pushes down, those tubes get forced up and drive those nails into the shoe. So take a few, two, three, four, five. I do the back first, I guess the back portion of the heel. Um, this is the mark that it leaves the, the top of this presser foot, I guess you'd call it. So when I do this, I like to add this piece of leather to the top. That way it marks that and not my rubber top lift. So then it's just... Push it down as far as it'll go. then you have nails in the back holding on the heel block. So we'll do that one more time. In the front here, I'll put one, two, three, four. So a total of four with one, two, three, four, five in the back makes nine total nails. And then this, First one went through here. Now this one's gonna go right around this area. Same thing. Make sure it's centered and then spin, crank down. And there you go. Now it's in the heel block. So it's holding the all the layers together with the footbed and all together so this has no chance of coming undone so the final touch or the final step of a boot repair restore is adding this leather piece um, in the back of the heel where the your heel sits where all those nails came through and the, the ring shank nails or the threaded nails went down um, even though that the nails crimped and it's nice and flat and smooth i like to add some padding to it just to cover it up and to give more comfort to the wearer whoever's wearing the shoes and then we will trim the sides And then taper down this front part. That way it's not such of a like it's abrupt stop and it kind of smooths in. You don't really feel that on your foot. All right. We are done. All right. We are done with this project. These turned out extremely nice in my opinion. I personally am not a snakeskin or more of a exotic leather boot per se, but I actually like these and I would wear these. I, I honestly would. And they are my size. So it's not making it any harder or easier to give it back to the customer. But yeah, I did the math. If he bought these back in 94 and the only reason I'm saying 94 is that's because that's the year this company stopped selling boots that would make these 29 years old almost 30 years old 10 years older than me which it's crazy because they're in like perfect shape it goes to show you that um, that saying they don't make them like they used to it has meaning because nowadays these Nakonas on the outside may look the same, but from the inside, it's 
the quality on these older ones are so much better than the newer ones. Um, a lot of times, instead of using a leather footbed, they use a paper footbed, which is like compressed cardboard. Um, it doesn't last very long. It starts to break down and crumble over the years of creasing and walking. A lot of times I have to replace them when I do get them in. Um, just not fun. And yeah. Here is that other one, the brown boot, brown snakeskin that he brought in. Bought around the same time back in 1994. I just got this one done. Yeah, I did the same stain. This one I did a, it's hard to tell, but I did a dark brown on this one and I did a black on this one. Hard to tell the difference, dark brown and black, especially on the camera. But I just got this one done. The other one I still have to finish, but I'll finish that one tomorrow because it's late. And I got dinner ready for me. So, there you are. 30 year old pair of boots. Better than new ones today. And God willing, he will get another 30 years out of these. Thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate it. Like and subscribe if you like this and you want to see more. I got plenty more boots coming along. If I could show you guys my wall of boots that I gotta get done, that I've been blessed. All of these are just about done, if you can tell. And I've been busy, 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 busy. But if you guys have any questions or inquiries about mailing in your pair of boots that you may wanna get done, go ahead and email me at oliverthesshoeman at gmail.com. I'll link everything in the bottom or the description of this video. I think that just about wraps everything up. Y'all have a good day. God bless y'all.